So hey guys, it's um, Timothy Xavier again. Today we're going to be doing a logo recreation basically. Just want to recreate the Adidas logo and see uh, the fastest, easiest way we can actually achieve it. Now the reason why I'm taking this series, this um, popular logo redesigns is because um, the idea about graphic design for some people is not just about learning, uh, it's not just about understanding graphic design, but also learning techniques like, you know, a couple of ways that you can achieve this particular kind of logo. You know, depending on, if you understand that the world of design, there are so many softwares you can actually uh, use to create a particular design. The techniques, the softwares might differ, but the techniques might be similar or the same, you understand? And um, in this situation where we have a logo like the Adidas, um, Using CorelDRAW, one of the ways you can actually achieve it, in fact, a couple of ways you can actually achieve this in CorelDRAW, but we're going to just focus on one. And that one method is a method you can actually still use in, say, Illustrator or some other program to achieve the same logo. So the first thing you want to do is bring in your Adidas logo if you don't already have it. And uh, before we start, if you're watching this video and you have not subscribed, please do well to subscribe, support the hustle, and... Uh, Turn on post notifications so you don't miss any upcoming posts and videos as I make them drop. So the first thing we're going to do here is, well, like I usually do, I have two pages. I've created my Corel Draw. I've already created a new document in my Corel Draw. I named it Adidas. I created two pages. If you want to add a new page, all you have to do is click on the plus sign where you have your page number here. Or when you're creating a new document, you can as well specify the number of pages you want and the size. If you want to change the size from here, it's not a problem. You can always come to the property bar while nothing is selected and adjust the sizes or the sizes for what you want. So you can see right now, I'm working on a 4x4 four four page, right? So the canvas is 4x4. Four four. Now I'll go to my page 2, which is blank. And uh, since we are trying to create what we have here on the page 1, a couple of things we have to mention before we start this logo is that um, the Adidas logo has some certain kind of angles that the, the lines are tilting towards. Uh, you want to take note of that. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention is when you're recreating or even creating a logo per se or any design, it's always good to think it through, right? Think about the easiest way you can achieve it. Think about the easiest, the closest shapes that can give you that logo you are trying to create. For the Adidas, I think a rectangle can do and we have a rectangle too right here, all right, in Coral Draw. But um, in this case, I'm not going to be using a rectangle. I'm going to be using a couple of lines to achieve this. So for that, we are going to need our freehand tool, which is um, a tool that's used to create lines and shapes as well, right? So we'll go to our page two, and the first thing we are going to do is we're going to try to create those lines. Now, if we go back to page one, if you look at the lines, you see they are tilted. And these lines, I actually took the measurement tilted to like an angle of, I think, 30 degrees to the left right from the base 30 degrees towards the left hand side to the base so it means that if i draw a straight line let's tr let's try it here if i draw a straight line using the freehand tool if i click somewhere and then i move down i just release my mouse and then i move my hands down and then i hold my shift to straighten it you notice that's a straight line right if i bend if i hold my shift if i move to the left or to the right move twice that's 30 degrees for every initial for every movement you make you're making 15 degree angles right 15 degree angles so while it's here it's actually a straight line 90 degree so if you move here and move here twice you've made an additional 30 degrees right so if you stop it there if you click there it will stop so if you carry this line and move it to the adidas logo you notice that the lines are perfectly lined up if you do the same thing for um a vertical for a horizontal line click the freehand tool again click here then move sorry click here then move hold your shift and move you see say this is a horizontal line right then if you move up a bit one two 30 degrees and click if you drag that same line again you notice that it lines up on the edge right perfectly so yeah we are actually working with lines that have 30 degree um inclinations right the left and the right so to do this, the first thing we want to do is go to page two. We're going to select our line, our freehand tool, and click somewhere. You can start from the base and do that. Just click, move it up, hold your shift, it straightens out, and move twice, and you get a perfect angle. 
now we need a line but we don't need just one line we need a couple of lines so for this first line that we've created we're going to press ctrl d to duplicate it and i think the duplicate is just about the right place but you just drag it and bring it down a little bit it doesn't really matter at this point so this space from both lines should indicate the size should indicate the boxes right this is a mountain this logo is actually a mountain and the mountain has like a step step it has like a couple of steps right three so these two lines are indicating the the body of the adidas logo so select both of them holding shift and then press ctrl g you group them together so now we have one of the lines the imaginary line right and then we press ctrl then we press ctrl d again i should stop saying ctrl d i should just say duplicate then we duplicate so once we duplicate we have another one we have another line so we grab this one this time around while it's still selected there's something that happens with the duplicate option is that well when you just create a duplicate and while it's still selected you can actually move it or resize it or do whatever you want to do to it and if you keep duplicating it will maintain that um that change that you've you've applied so if i grab this one and move it to this side mindful of the space between the lines because that space is necessary and i drop it say here if i press ctrl d again that's why i duplicate again it's going to maintain that same space so you see there's a space between them so now we have six sets of lines right and three sets of lines at two two lines each grouped so we have this one we have this one and we have this one and each of them are going to represent the adidas um you know the mountain right so from here i think you can begin to guess what our next step is going to be we will still select our freehand tool and click on the bottom side here and just click here just hold shift and create a straight line and stop somewhere here now we need to move this line up a bit so it goes in we need that intersection it is very very important that these lines intersect each other all right so this is going to represent the bottom as you can see so we also need a couple of lines that will strike across the uh this uh the shapes again or the lines again and this time around they're going to be at 30 degrees remember from the bottom so we create another dot we click again and then we hold shift we we'll make it straight and bend it twice like so we're straighten this line um i think i'm doing it the wrong way let's try like this so we'll drag it like this on the vertical um horizontal edge and then we'll push it twice one two and then we'll stop now for this line that we have we're just going to move it up mindful of how the shape is going to look like so if you look here if you look here this place here where my mouse my cursor is you notice that's like the first that's like this you know area right the first area this place so you could just set it up properly and then the adidas logo the mountain logo doesn't it doesn't climb uniformly right there is this small brick small brick and it goes up a bit like a staircase so for us to achieve that since we have one line we can as well make a duplicate of that same line so we can do duplicate ctrl d and then you see the duplicate distance i think i like the distance uh if your distance is too far or it went up too much like for the staircase you might want to grab it and drag it down a little bit and then duplicate again but i like it the way it is so i'm going to maintain it and i'll press the um, ctrl d again to have a third duplicate so now what we have here is the first shape and then we're going to remove the line and then create generate the second shape and remove the line and then read the third shape right how do we now generate the adidas from here because i basically can I practically can see my logo but we are yet to generate it well to generate it it's very very simple all we have to do is call up our beloved <laughs> it's actually beloved because it's a tool that you use all the time a lot of time it's called the smart field tool right so select the smart guy click on it and oops mistake so we'll click on it and then we move i've said before when you select your smart field what it does is it helps you generate if you hover on it it will tell you it helps you generate uh shapes from where uh the right other shapes are intersecting so if you notice and you see how all the lines are going across each other here the smart field tool can help us generate 
those areas so all we just need to do is come into that area here and click on it generate that place now we switch to the pick tool first tool at the top there select the smaller line the line inside and delete it because we don't need it we only need it to generate the first one we grab our smart field again and we generate the second don't, now we're done with the second line so we select it and delete it select our smart field again or just press space bar and then we generate the third one and we hold shift and select the other two and drag them out you can color it black and that's just about to add the last logo i think the spacing between them for mine is a little too much compared to this i don't know yeah looks like it's a bit too much if it's a bit too much like mine you just select the shape and maybe hold control and use your arrow button your navigation button arrow side just push it like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now this is this is not a professional way to do this but you could always do that so you can select this one if you are not holding your control just push it five times when you hold control it actually slows down the movement by half so if you don't hold control you can just push it five times inside one two three four five so yeah you can see the spacing between them is practically the same now so we select this select all of them and we press we can choose to group it or we can choose to uh weld it together uh since it's going to be a shape you don't have to break apart you could just weld it together so you can go to your properties bar and locate weld and click on it and then everything stays as one object like this right so all you're left with is as i think you're done with the whole lines so all you're left with is um let's just select all these ones move it out let's bring this one here press b to center it so we have this uh, for our logo which is similar to this as you can see and just to be clear if you want to type the name uh, you can go back to page one uh, we can deduce that the name of the font uh, used typeface used here is um, avant-garde I think so we can use avant-garde so we can select our text to click somewhere and say it, it doesn't matter what matters is creating the uh, the logo mark which is this um, which is this shape right so but we can still add the word mark so we do a d i d a s in lower case and then we could go to our uh, font highlight the area and type avant let's see yeah something like this so we can try to make this one bold and I think that's just about it. So we we'll stretch it out a bit. And you know, let it touch the tip a bit. And then if you look at the other one, you see it's kind of like closed. The space in between them is kind of like closed out more than this. So you can select your shape tool and that that does exact um that job for us. So you can grab this controller here select the text grab this controller and squeeze it in a bit so closes up a bit and yeah you don't switch back to your pick tool and we'll stretch this out a bit and we need to center so we need to align so we want adidas as a text to center itself vertically on mm, horizontally on this um logo mark so how do we do that we select the adidas in coral draw how you do that is if you want to align an object to another object it's like a logical statement select the first object you're aligning and then hold shift and select where you're aligning into the object you're aligning to and then you use any of the shortcuts or you align to whichever one you want to so let's just do that so i'll select i want to align i want adidas to be vertically centered let me just move it a bit so that we can notice it a bit more dramatically so let's say you wanted to center this on this horizontal that's from left to right you can just select the adidas first that's i want to center you you hold your shift on you i want to center it on you the word mark right so now you go to your objects and you go to align and distribute and you see align centers horizontally which is centering it from left to right you click on that and it centers you see that perfectly it lines up perfectly on the center now just to just to recap it again if you want to align all you have to do is select the object you're aligning first hold your shift and select where you're aligning it to the other object you're aligning to 
and use whatever letter um you know relates to the short course if you are aligning to the top use t if you're aligning to the bottom use b if you're aligning to the center um horizontally use c if you're aligning to the center vertically that's from top to bottom uh, you use e right so if you're aligning to the left use l right is r so all the shortcuts are kind of like except the center um vertically all the other shortcuts are actually the first letters of the word so it's easier to remember that top is t bottom is b so yeah we've aligned this i think that sums the whole logo up uh, there's a there's a small uh, registered um, icon you can do that there's actually a very easy way you can create your registered icon on Corel Draw. all you need to do is select your text tool and click somewhere and then hold your shift and open bracket and then press r and switch back to your pick tool and it should close up by itself automatically yeah so that's like a very, very easy way to do that and now you could choose to still use the same fonts let's say avant-garde uh, maybe bold and you could reduce it and take it all the way to the top here you know and that's just about it All right, so logo done. Yeah. So this is mine and this is the original. Pretty similar, right? All right, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and drop a comment as well. And you can also request for a particular logo you'd like me to recreate and I'll do that. Uh, I reply to you and I'll do that ASAP. So uh, till the next video stay tight and please 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 be sure to subscribe for you uh, before you leave and also turn on post notifications so when I drop new videos you're going to see them as I drop them